Hey, what's up, everybody? Julius D. Berry with Majestic Studios, and I'm here today to get started on the uh, section of the Antelope audio uh, system that I have recently purchased. I um, wanted to do a series and get started on it. Um, these next couple of videos will be dedicated to uh, the control panel itself. I'm going to go over the interface in one of the videos and kind of how everything is broken up into sections i think i'll probably do this video in maybe two at the least but probably three at the most separate videos i think the routing section is going to have its own uh separate part um i think with all that is wrapped up in everything in this screen i think it's probably deserving of its own video um, so we're going to save that for later. Not going to do much talking about that today. If something um, within uh, these other couple of sections runs into that, then we may touch on it. But going to mainly um, save the control panel for its own video. Um, so just want to kind of get started. Um, first of all, this is uh, the screen for the control panel. Uh, just to show you guys how to get to it. If you are, um, when you load up your launcher, for your antelope interface the screen looks like this and it's going to find your device it'll see it if it's connected if you don't see it connected here they have what things that you can uh, steps that you can go through to to help your machine locate the device um, sometimes it's just a matter of resetting or um, uh, checking for a driver or something like that I've only had to do it a couple of times where it didn't see the device when it came on but most of the time um, since I've been up and running it's come straight up as soon as I've um, got to this screen so from here um, you can go to manage and that's where you are able to register or assign features uh, things that you've purchased from Antelope Audio um, you can also unregister devices um, as well um, device info information about your unit itself um, and then the, the start control panel which is where we're going to get to so today we're going to uh, start the control panel oh yeah from right here they also have um, let, me, let me go back um, it's it's looking for my um, or loading or setting my, my system up now I'm going to go back out of this for a second um, because there is something that I wanted to show. Um, I'm gonna close this down uh, here. Um, this is the devices tab, and then you have the plugins tab. This is where you're able to see um, all of the, I guess, aftermarket stuff that you've gotten um, for your system. The features, if you want to install those. Um, I don't have any of the Edge microphones, so I don't have access to any of these. I did uh, install the AFX to DAW just to see what would happen, but that's not available for Goliath which is the system that I have so this doesn't work for me uh, but you guys with um, the other our interfaces or hardware from Antelope Audio should have access to this stuff if you bought it um, so anyway we're gonna just from here we're gonna just go ahead and jump right back into the, uh, the control panel a um, little nice animation uh, to let you know that it's looking for it it goes through all the loading and all that jazz and then we are ready to go okay so I'm gonna make this bigger uh, I've seen people ask about this before on the forums uh, so all you have to do is just drag it from the side and you're looking for the little arrows that look like this it's either gonna be up or down or sideways can, if you guys can see that and then you just click on it and drag and you can make it as big or as small as you need it to be I'm gonna make mine pretty big so you guys can see everything um, nice and big on your screens um, so anyway this is the <clears throat> This is the Antelope Audio Goliath uh, control panel. I think they probably all look similar, um, probably exactly the same, uh, minus, um, you know, I guess if yours has different amounts of preamps or, or whatnot, um, it might look a little different, but for the most part, each one of these uh, control panels is gonna look pretty much the same. I know they'll function very much the same. Uh, but here, this little button here is just a power on and off button. You're able to power your interface uh, on or off from this screen. If you just push this little orange light, it shuts the machine down. I'm not going to do mine because I don't want to do anything to mess with my audio for my video. Um, but this little button here will allow you to turn your interface on or off. And then here it says the main monitors. Um, you can control the volume for your monitors from this little scroll here uh, and it will 
auto update on the actual uh, hardware you can also use the knobs on your hardware to turn it up or down uh, but this is just a little easy way if you don't want to reach or if it's out of reach um, so everybody has their instruments and interfaces in different um, locations as it relates to their workflow and how they work so um, I think that's pretty cool that they put this here in the software for us to be able to control the volume of the main monitors from there um, you can also mute them uh, from here I think you can double click here you can type in a number if there's a set amount that you like to work with normally you don't want to deal with scrolling you just double click here and type the number in for your DB where, you, where you'd like to be set um, the clock source they have several different uh, sources that you can uh, clock your unit from I'm guessing that oven means uh, my actual the Goliath device uh, it's always been on oven I'm not really sure what oven means but that's what mine's always been set on so I just leave it there I don't change it or anything um, but you can also have it set for work clock uh, it could be USB clocked clock from an ADAT source um, you can clock from a MADI source and SPDIF and AES as well um, so just choose whichever one of those um, you're trying to clock your device from but I'm just gonna leave mine on oven because I'm using my Goliath as the master clock from our studio so I'm just gonna leave that set there you can also set your sample right here um, you have lots of different choices uh, 32k 44.1 48 88.2 96 176.4 and 192 uh, so depending on uh, how your studio is set up and what you have your sample rate set for for all of your other devices you want to make sure they're all um, clocking at the same uh, sample rate um, you also have your settings button here this device is, is just your your number or whatever for your um, your actual hardware um, I think that I didn't I don't think I had to enter this in uh, I think it pulled it um, statically or that pulled it from the unit on its own um, this is your settings menu um, you can go in and you could modify the main monitor out trim is like how loud or soft you would like yours I think all of my settings in this is are set at um, the default so I'm just gonna still go over with them with you and what they mean the line out trim this is attributed to the line outs that are coming out of your system um, you could have a, a set uh, trim amount of trim that is coming from each one of them automatically um, so I like I have mine set at 20 dB if I have to turn it down I'll do it from another source versus um, the automatic amount of trim on each one of them um, so mine set at 20 um, then you have the uh, oscillators uh, this is for if the uh, what are they called um, you can send a tone to your outputs to check and make sure you're getting signal to whatever speakers you have hooked up so you can um, set this to different I guess pitches is what that would be um, that you want to hear coming from uh, going to like if you wanted to make sure that your monitors are connected you, they'll allow you to send just a tone uh, to your to your monitors or to your headphones so you can make sure everything is connected right and this is the level of that uh, that tone that goes to that output source um, you have one for oscillator one and there's a mute switch for that and you have another one for oscillator two there's a mute switch for that um, there is uh, I gotta figure this uh, talk back <clears throat> oh okay so this is where you set the uh, the talk back up for your unit I did not notice this before and I was wondering because I hadn't seen the information written anywhere I may do a separate quick video about this um, just so people can see it because I had no idea uh, but right here is where when you push the talkback button it's on the front of your interface um, this decides where the talkback audio your voice speaking to whoever's in your mic booth or your instrument uh, your musicians this uh, section here determines where that talkback monitor is sent so if you click here every time you push that talkback button there's a little microphone on the front of my interface um, whenever I push that button and I'm trying to talk this is it's going to send what I'm saying my voice is going to go into the headphone one output this is sending the talkback TBK to headphone one you can also send it to headphone two and you can send it to the to the monitors to the main monitors um, so you could choose any of these any combination of them or none of them uh, however you decide you want your talkback to be set up 
Um, I have to do some more research on Maddie and what exactly those interfaces or the connection looks like and what it does. So maybe I'll have a separate video on that later, but I'm not going to touch it now because I don't really know what it is. Um, the reamp volume, I'm sure you all, you know, know about the reamping and that's like for guitars or I guess you could really use it for any kind of uh, sound. Um, but you can send a recorded signal out of your uh, interface, out of one of the reamp outputs and uh send it to uh where you can re-record it and then so i guess what the thing is you record it dry initially and then you can do use the reamp meaning you could send the signal back out and try different effects to get the sound or the tone that you like um, but this is the amount of volume in dbs that is coming out of the reamp outputs on the front of my antelope uh, device on the front of my goliath <clears throat> here um, this is the line out volume. I know we talked about this before um, the line out trim. This is the line out volume here. Um, this is the brightness. I wish I could have um, found this when I first was uh, using my first started using the interface. Um, I was having a contrast problem with my camera. I was trying to point my camera right at the screen so you guys could see exactly what was going on on the screen. <clears throat> And if I would have known about this brightness setting, that would have helped because I could have toned down the brightness a little bit and that would have probably helped with the contrast. Um, the USB channels, this is the amount of channels that the unit uses or sees uh, through the USB. I think it could be either 24 or 32. I'm not positive about that. Mine was set on 24, uh, but I, I changed it to 32 um, just to see if it would change and it did. And so I just left it there. Um, this is the Thunderbat, Thunderbolt, Thunderbat, what is that? Thunderbolt latency mode. And you can choose between fast, normal, and safe. Um, not exactly sure yet how that relates um, to your recording. I'm sure it's got something to do with the amount of latency that you're hearing or even the potential for hearing while you're recording. Um, here, are the buffer size, you can adjust the samples. Um, we all know about buffer sizes and being able to record. Uh, and how much latency we hear versus how much processing power is used on the computer itself. Uh, but this stuff is for Windows only, so I have a Mac, so I don't have to worry about this. So that is the settings section. And we're going to go from there to the interface of the actual control panel. Okay, so the control panel is broken up into several different sections. Um, uh, these are the inputs right here. On the screen, uh, these are the inputs that are automatically tied into your system. Uh, this does not include um, any kind of aggregate devices or anything like that, although I think it would be awesome if they could figure out a way to integrate aggregate devices into this control panel, um, but that's probably not gonna happen. Um, it's probably everything done right here in their host, so um, they're not looking to add anybody else's uh, systems into their system uh, even though you can make an aggregate device and I have done that and but we'll talk about that at another time um, but this each one of these little uh, sections preamp 1 through 8 preamp 9 through 16 they all correlate everything you see here correlates to an input on the Goliath interface um, so when I'm on preamp 1 through 8 these circles that you see across the front of here uh, they kind of to me look like uh, XLR inputs without the holes um, but these all correspond to one of the uh, first eight preamp inputs on the back of my Goliath um, and 9 through 16 is the same thing except it's channels 9 through 16 uh, so if I have a microphone plugged into say channel 4 into input 4 on the back of the interface then I could come here and make adjustments and settings for that um, you could just turn this volume here up to get the amount of gain uh, that you would like for that channel um, you can also utilize the um, well on the Goliath you can utilize the uh, the gain knob that's on the front of the unit and when you turn it it goes up one uh, for every click for every click you have it goes up one DB uh, so you can make those adjustments here on the screen um, and not, you can make them on the screen in the software or you can make it on the hardware unit itself uh, also um, you can also select where you want to have uh, 48 volts which is phantom power sometimes you have uh, microphones hooked up that are going to need to have phantom power so you could set the phantom power individually uh, for each channel the ones you need and then the ones you don't need you can leave it off you can turn that on and off from here just by clicking in this little 
uh, section where it says 48 volt. Uh, this next thing that looks like a little chain link or chain, this is your stereo link button. Uh, you push this here if you would like, and you can tell it's only on the odd number channels. So you have a link, stereo link button here, but then on channel two, you don't see one. Then on channel three, you see one. Then on channel four, you don't see one. And it does all that all the way up channels one through eight, and then again, nine through 16. But if you click this, it automatically ties channel nine and 10. So it takes the odd number channel and the even number channel, and it ties them together. And so when you make adjustments on one of them, it makes adjustments for both of them automatically. Uh, you saw that I just turned the 48 volts on and you see the, the volume went up. Uh, not the volume went up, but you saw it, it adjusted on channel 10 as well. It does the same thing for the preamp gain. When you turn the volume up or down, uh, or the gain up or down, it adjusts for both channels because we're on stereo link mode. <clears throat> and then the last button is the polarity phase. You can reverse it um, if you have two microphones hooked up to sources and uh, or you want the microphones to stay in phase or not get out of phase with each other, then you could set, hit this phase button and it would allow the mics not to cancel each other out. But you don't wanna do that if you're on, um, I don't think you wanna do that if you're on stereo link because then the two microphones that are together, it's gonna put both of them in uh, the same polarity switch at the same time. Um, so that's uh, the channel input. Oh, we also have this little microphone here. If you push this here, it brings up a little uh, box so you can see settings for your microphone. You can turn the phase inverts, invert on or off here and you see it, the little yellow light indicator comes on when you turn it on. You can turn your 48 volts on, volts on from here. Um, and like I told you guys before, I don't have any of the edge microphones, so I don't have access to any of these settings at the bottom of the mic mod one. Um, you can also change each uh, each line from mic to line input and I uh, think on oh no that's it so you can change it from mic to line right here on any of the channels depending on what you have connected into the uh, the interface uh, if you have a line source uh, which will be like a quarter inch cable most likely you can select um, line here and if, you, if there's a microphone connected you select microphone and of course um, you also have access to the high Z channels as well. I think that's on one through four only. Yep, but you can also access the high Z from here. Um, we'll be get to that in a second. Put these all back on mic so it won't mess me up later. All right, and then the same thing with your ADAT in. If you have um, ADAT devices, which is a digital, some type of digital interface preamp or whatnot, you can have it connected uh, to the back of the, the uh, unit via a uh, toss link or uh, optical cable. Um, that's the one with the little red laser. Uh, well, I call it a laser. It's a little light, but um, that's how you connect that through the ADAT in or ADAT out on the back of the unit. And these are the, the channels for each one of those. You'll have, you have 16 total, and they come in banks of eight or two pairs of eight. Um, so channel one through eight would be the first ADAT input. Excuse me. And the second ADAT input is channels nine through 16. Um, but you can also stereo link these by clicking this button and it, um, stereo links channel one and two or three, four. Uh, it's always odd to even. Uh, it'll link them together. So when you make adjustments on one, it automatically adjusts in the second one as well. Um, then we have the spit if in. It's just uh, the same thing as before. If you have something connected to the SPDIF, uh, SPDIF uh, input, this is where you would control the gain, um, the gain structure, gain staging for those channels. And you could, like I said, stereo link it here and it'll change both of them together. Okay. And then uh, lastly, with this section, you have the high Z front. These are the same channels that you could access through channels one through four on the preamp section. So let's say we go up to channel, I mean, 29 dB on there. Uh, it didn't change. Um, so I need to look and see how those are related, but you can actually, oh, let's see if I put it, um, put the mic back down and I'm gonna select high Z and then I'm gonna move the channel up to 26 and let's see if it's registered here. Nope, it didn't. So I need to find out what the, the similarities or different similarities or differences are between um, the high Z selecting from this section, selecting high Z as opposed to selecting high Z on the front. 
Oh, it's probably just two different inputs all together. You probably can access the high Z's from the back of the unit. Um, if you wanted to plug into channels one through four on the back of the unit in those preamps, you could actually use those as high Z inputs, it, but you could also use the ones on the front as well. All right. Um, just like we had the main monitor uh, volume meet, uh, not meter, uh, fader to adjust the volume for the main volume. We also have the same thing for our headphone outputs. Headphone one can be controlled here. You can double click and type in a specific number. Excuse me. Uh, type in a specific number there, and then uh, you also have the mute button here for the headphone one output. You have the exact same structure set up over here for headphone two with the fader and the double click in to enter the number, and the uh, um, and the uh, mute button here as well. Need to check and see what this TRK means, or maybe uh, TBK. Oh, that's the talkback mic. So that my talkback mic that we talked about earlier and what source it's being sent to, if I want to just do it all from the software, I can just push right here on the talkback button, or I could also push the talkback button on my actual interface, and it allows me to uh, where the to send the audio to those places that we selected before. And I'm also noticing now that when I push this talkback button, uh, I get a a menu on my screen that tells me you know how loud do you want the talk back to be I can turn the knob and be a certain uh, volume in DB that I could send to those sources and it also gives me an option to select whether I want to send it to the headphone one headphone two or to the monitor uh, so that's the uh, the headphone amp section there I'm not headphone amp excuse me the, um, the talk back mic section there um, Let's see, I think that's all uh, for the, the main section of the interface. We also have the, the buttons here for routing to get to the routing tab, which I said we're gonna talk about in a later video. Uh, you have the button to get to the mixer tab, and we're gonna talk about what the mixer is in a separate video. We have the effects tab. To, this is where we will add all our uh, AFX, uh, AFX um, plugins. Um, I have all, these are all I guess presets here um, yeah these are all presets um, but this is where you would add all of that you know that good gooey gushy good sounding effects to your recordings or your monitoring um, we also have presets where we can save uh, different ways that this entire console is set up um, excuse me if I'm not supposed to use console. I know that one of our other friend companies uses the term console for their uh, their uh, interface uh, for their um, their system. This is called a control panel. Um, so that you can set this your control panel up in different kinds of ways, and then you could recall it back instantly using these preset uh, buttons one through five. Um, if you have sessions set up certain ways, you want to you know save a way a session is set up and load it to recall it and I think these presets would go per session so if I have different ways I want the uh, the console to be set up uh, per session I can do that in five different ways and, and be able to recall it at, at a click of a button and recall to um, um, a different way my thing with my system would be set up so um, hope that makes sense uh, what I just said each session you, you can have five presets saved per session so if you have a way that you're set up for your guitars tracking you could have that set up under preset one if your drummer is tracking you can have a way set up already set up for him under preset two you have keyboardists have that all set up under three if you have vocalists set up under four and if you're in a mixing section session uh, for that same session you could have how that set up under five so you could have your routing effects the way that affects the mixer we have everything set up you can save that um, in um, in these five presets and be able to recall them whenever you like and then um, of course you can save the entire session uh, so I think that is it I got this done in under 25 minutes I hope this helps somebody uh, please be on the lookout for those other videos I am the next one next couple I'm going to um, be talking about the routing system the mixer system and the effect system oh yeah and then the meter system let me tell you about this real quick i got a couple of seconds but this just allows you to see the meters 
uh, for the different inputs and outputs that you have coming into or going in, out of your interface. You can actually see the meters uh, light up on the screen um, when you're recording or when you're playing back so you can see what kind of levels you're getting. So anyway, I appreciate you guys for uh, following the channel. Please uh, like, share, subscribe, ask questions down below if you have any. Uh, tell some, tell people about my channel. I'm really trying to, to grow the channel again, um, utilizing what I'm learning and figuring out about the Goliath Antelope, or the Antelope Audio Goliath. And um, like I said, always hoping that I'm helping you guys and that you're learning something from what I'm offering. Uh, check back soon and I'll have more videos for you. Thanks.